What is up, savages? We've been looking at swap all week. So let's go ahead and continue the twin tr trend, trend and check out their web wallet. All right, so let's check out what is going on with Swap. You can see here that uh, I am still mining it. I'm mining it to the official pool on this one NVIDIA 10 series 6 GPU rig. Looks like this. You can see the overclock settings and what kind of hash rate or graphs per second I'm getting, temperature, all that stuff, power draw and all that. So you can see the, if you need to pause it here, if you're watching this video after yeah, after it posts, uh, then you can see what my settings are. Pretty, pretty standard as far as that goes, as far as overclock settings goes. And let's look at what Swap is doing in the market right now. This was uh, Tuesday night. So you're probably going to be watching this Wednesday afternoon. So I don't know what it's going to be then, but for right now, it is up just a little bit. The overall market is still kind of going crazy, although it looks like it's cooled off just a tad here. Um, yeah, it looks like it's starting to level out a little bit. All right, <clears throat> and again, this is uh, Tuesday night. Let's look at what to mine real quick. You got uh, NVIDIA, this, the 1660 Ti looks pretty good, even at 11 cents per kilowatt hour on uh, to mine swap it shows up as fifth in the list a little bit profitable not bad um, z coin bit cash uh, bitcoin gold are up at the top and uh but at least swap is up there you know in that in that top section you know if you were trading in this crypto each day then this would be a pretty decent project to mine and let's look at their wallet so web wallets are really cool um, sometimes they're nice to mine to but i would not recommend storing a large amount of crypto on one uh, just because they are in I, I would say that a lot of them are pretty reliable but there i have seen situations i think it happened with uh, conceal ccx where their uh, web wallet um, whenever they i don't know if it was a fork or what happened but it seemed like um the web wallets the i don't know if this is true or not actually i don't wanna, i don't want to say that the the balances were lost but i think they did uh warn everybody like hey grab you know grab your crypto off the web wallet anyway long story short i don't recommend storing a large amount of crypto on a web wallet uh, they are extremely convenient you can access them from anywhere basically and they can extend some of the project's features and functions depending on what capabilities are built into the wallet um, and what it's actually used for. The swap wallet is pretty slick and pretty user friendly. It's easy to use. To access it, you would go to xwp.1, that is the swap main website, and then you could click on wallet downloads, and then it's over here under, then you click on mobile and light wallets, and then you click on light web wallet, and that would take you to wallet xwp.fyi uh, but you don't need to really do that because they put a link out here on the on the main splash page here so uh, you just click on light web wallet here and that takes you to wallet.xwp.fyi and if you already have an account you would just click on login and you'll be presented with uh, you know how to log into the existing account we're going to get into this in a minute uh, but you'll you see right here that you kind of have to have some important information here just to log on it's not going to be a username and password situation uh, so uh, we'll get to that in a minute to create an account you would click create account and then as soon as you click on that uh, you are presented with private information so you want, I wish that maybe they had this hidden uh, until maybe you mouse over it or something because as soon as you click on that, this is basically your uh, private key or this is your mnemonic seed 
to access your account and this is what you have to have in order to access your account uh, anyone who has this seed phrase or the mnemonic seed has access to your account okay so if I were to put crypto into this account that I just created then anyone that's watching this stream could the first one <laughs> to, could go in there and access this wallet and move the crypto out of it and steal it right uh, so you have to write these words down I would write them down and put them in a safe place if you are going to uh, you know want to access this this uh, wallet after the fact uh, I yeah so I, I would yeah I would write it down and then you you have to type it in here and if you if you feel like it's been compromised in some way someone was looking over your shoulder or whatever then I would just do another one okay so I would just go back to the main page and create another account and make sure that's private make sure that you know you could uh, disconnect from the network also before you try to copy it or anything like that that might help uh, secure it in some ways but it is web-based so you can't get to this without being connected so you kind of have to uh, look at that all right so anyway in this case what we'll do is we will just copy this I wouldn't suggest doing that there's malicious software that can steal information off of your uh, clipboard uh, I would definitely write them down on a piece of paper and then type them in down here don't just copy and paste like I did uh, but in this case, you're going to click, I've written down my mnemonic seed, log me in. So you click there, and now you have your account overview page. If you send swap to this address, there's no need to actually refresh the browser, the browser window. It's uh, real-time information here, so it will update if there is an update. So that is a cool feature of the web wallet. You don't have to keep refreshing or anything like that. All right, so you have overview. You can see here account overview, your account and recent transactions. You got your balance over here, your unlock balance. You also have the block height showing right here. And in order to check to see if this is the most current inform information, you could go to the, their blockchain explorer which is explorer.explorer.xwp.1 and from here you would see right here you can tell the block height right here uh, the, the latest one actually I clicked on it so 2447153 you go back to the wa web wallet and 2447272 two. that doesn't sound the same 72 What am I looking at here? Two four four seven one. Hmm. Two four four seven one five three. What am I looking at? Am I just looking at it wrong here? interesting okay all right I needed to refresh it my bad uh, yeah that's silly okay so I was thinking I was going to be looking at uh, real-time information I already had the page open and I didn't go to go to the page uh, you know uh, re uh, right away so um, yeah all right so now I'm back on track two four four seven two seven five and then we go to over here and you can see two four four seven two seven five so we know that we're on the on the right uh, block height chain and all that stuff all right cool stuff there so that's how you would check and then what else we got here you also have the address so this is your public address and this is what you would provide to someone if you wanted to receive swap XWP to this address to this web wallet so this is the only public information uh, that you should uh, share with others to receive uh, crypto sent to that address
And then you also have recent transactions. And up here, you've also got, now this will show recent transactions. I don't know how many it'll show, maybe 10 or so, five or 10. And then up here, you have transactions and you can actually click there and see uh, all of them provided that you've updated this uh, wallet with all the transactions. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But you have basically a list of 20, so maybe this overview might show 20, I don't know. Uh, so you got transactions. You, if you had a lot, you could go go through and click next twenty and, and get the uh, get all the transactions. There's also a transactions button. Um, actually, no. That, yeah, that's what. I, okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, you also have a send, and this is where you can actually send funds from this wallet to another address. Pretty, pretty basic, simple stuff. You can see here that the payment ID is no longer used, that's obsolete. Uh, so you would only use a swap address and the amount, and then send payment. And we'll do that in a minute. I'll access uh, another wallet that actually has some swap in it. Uh, so there you go, you got overview, transaction, send. Then up here at the top right hand corner, you've got account. And here you can click review login seed. So if you didn't catch it at the beginning, which you probably should have because you were supposed to write it down, then you can go here to actually get that mnemonic seed login information. You can also click over here, account and import transactions. So if you did restore this wallet, for example, uh, you know, from, uh, or if you're accessing it on a new computer, right? Or on a new browser or uh, whatever, you could import the tran all the transactions, although that will scan the whole blockchain. Uh, that'll uh, scan the whole blockchain and actually take quite a while, uh, and it's uh, resource intensive. So don't recommend that, especially if you only have had the wallet for a short while. You could just import the transactions uh, based on the the age of the wallet, right? So if you just created it five days ago and you wanted to get all of the transactions into it, then you could just choose seven days ago, right? Um, to import the recent transactions. And then of course you can choose don't import any if you wanna just get out of here. So, um, all right, got that. And then account details, this is also important information. You've got your mnemonic seed again. This is the same seed as this one. But I would definitely write these numbers down. I would, uh, you know, you, you could copy and paste your address, but the, all the other ones I would probably write them down. I wouldn't copy and paste them. Um, but uh, it's kind of small, so you want to make sure you uh, zoom up if you have to and, and write down the right numbers. But you can use the view key, and you can see right here it's private, right? So these two are private, and then you got public here. So anything, uh, anything that is public, you can share. Anything that is private, you should not, right? And uh, this is how people would send you crypto. And the other information, the mnemonic seed, the view key, and the uh, spin key are all ways to access the crypto that's in this wallet. Uh, so those are private. But document those as well. And that's where you would get to that under the account tab. And then you also have, or the account link here. Then you also, have, that's pretty much all of the functionality. That's pretty much the whole wallet. We covered everything there. And then you would click uh, log out if you wanted to get out of it. Now, if you click log in, you see that it does ask for the mnemonic seed. Now I didn't document what we were just looking at. It doesn't really matter. I have uh, one that's saved here. Let me get the information. All right, so I got that. Also got a language option here, as a few, okay? So we're gonna stick with uh, English. And then I'm going to, so I pasted my mnemonic seed. Now technically you would be writing this down, remember, because you hadn't uh, copied it, uh, but you would be typing this in manually. So it's pretty secure if that piece of paper that has your seed written on it is secure and you keep it in a safe or whatever, then you can see how this is a highly secure wallet in that, in that aspect. 
Uh, so then we're going to enter my account. You can see that this actual account has eight swap inside it. Uh, so I did use this one earlier just to do a little bit of testing. And I sent and received some swap from it so that I can show you the transactions. That is cool. Um, you can see the transactions here. As far as sending, let's go ahead and show that real quick, how to send. I've got an, an address I can send to here. And then we'll just send one, just to show you how this works. So we're sending one of our eight swap, send payment. And we should be presented with a, an amount, transaction ID hash, because this is a, a privacy coin. So the transaction, the amounts and uh, to and from addresses are not visible. You have to view things via the uh, transaction ID or the private key. Um, so what you could do, you could go to the Block Explorer. I think you can go to the Block Explorer and actually look up this transaction ID. I don't know if you can do it right away or not. We can try it. Okay, so it is in there. Um, the transaction size, where's the actual amount? Okay, so yeah, you won't see the amount because it's got a question on it because it's a stealth address, all that stuff. So, uh, but you can see that it is uh, happening, right? The transaction is actually happening. At least I think that's what we're looking at here. All right, so that is um, the way that you could track a transaction or at least look to see if it's on the chain, right? Um, and then that's pretty much it for that. What else was I gonna show you? Oh, another way to log in. Uh, so let's log out here. And like I was saying earlier, if you already have an account, you can log in either with the mnemonic seed or the address and private key. So if you click on address and private key, you have to have your public address. Let me grab that from over here. This is the one that I created earlier. One, now it has, it probably has seven uh, swap in it. The private key, I do have that copied. And then the private spin key, paste that in there. All right, and uh, you could do it without the spin key, but if you do it without the spin key, then you are only viewing, right? You're not gonna be able to actually transfer uh, crypto or send it. So. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in there for now, but just know that you don't have to have it and it says optional right here. So uh, just keep all that in mind and then we'll go with enter my account. So now we are back to looking at that same account. You can see here where I sent the one swap. Uh, now here is, and that's pretty much it. That's it for the wallet. That is a, a I think a pretty fairly, fairly uh, in-depth overview of the web wallet. Here's the challenge though. There's, I'm gonna leave this in there, that 6.99 XWP, I'm gonna leave it in there. So if you can get into the wallet by using the methods that we talked about, uh, then you can have it, it's yours. So that's it, I will see y'all probably tonight. I will be live after, I don't know if Red Panda is going to be streaming, but I'll be right before uh, Brandon Coin. I uh, don't know what we'll be covering, probably something with swap because I did switch over the rig to a regular pool. So we'll see how that compares to the uh, solo mining pool where we basically mine 24 uh, swap in a day. So uh, we'll take a look at that. That'll be before Brandon Coin at 10. I'll be live at 930. Not sure about uh, Red Panda. So anyway, I will see you guys next time. This crypto is whoever gets it first. So I'll see you all next time. Later. Stay savage.